Hey everybody, welcome to Blade HQ. I'm Timote with Matt from White River. George is out today playing sick, so we're gonna kill it. All right, Matt, so welcome into Salt Lake, I guess outside of Salt Lake, but uh, close enough. Yeah. You had some traffic on the way down? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was a, it was a great trip until I got in here, and then uh, accidents and hour and a half drive to the, to the shop here. So. Utah is notorious for rubberneckers. Everybody yeah. behind the camera will confirm that. Mm -hmm. um, but no, we're excited to have you in. I know we have the grand opening for the storefront coming up soon. Yeah. So Matt's gonna come entertain us and show all of our guests exactly what White River brings to the table. Mm -hmm. um, tell us a little bit about White River. Yeah, so we're a small family owned and operated company. Uh, we're based in Michigan. Everything we make is 100% US made, guaranteed for life. And uh, we're just, a, uh, like I said, a small company. Uh, family and just a few dedicated friends cool. and uh, we make these designs for our customers based on what we think we would use. Uh, we try to make them functional but then also beautiful at the same time and sure. like I said they're all guaranteed for life no questions asked replacement policy. Okay. Um, so that's kind of White River in a nutshell. That's awesome. So tell me a little bit about the origin of the company. How did you guys come to be? I know your dad is still over the company right? Mm -hmm. And your mom, I always see your mom, she's always a sweetheart at the yep. shows. But yeah, tell us a little bit about how they came to came into the industry. Yeah, so our whole family has been in uh, various manufacturing ventures in the past. You know, we grew up in manufacturing different products like uh, military products, firearm accessories, things like that. Okay. Um, in 2005, we sold a company, and then uh, for a few years, we didn't really work together. Uh, down the road, 2011, we came across some grinding equipment okay. that's kind of specific to making knives, and we decided, hey. Let's start a knife company, get back in business together, get back into the outdoor industry together. Sure. We were all excited about it, and uh, the rest is kind of history. It's been a long road, but um, now we're, we're kind of a premium American knife company, and we don't only make our knives, but we actually make a lot of knives for other brands as well. So. Okay, yeah, well, we talked about that a little bit before we started rolling. Yeah. So let's get into that just a little bit before we start getting into all your good stuff. Mm -hmm. So OEM, right? That's right. what we refer to it as. Yeah. So you OEM for a couple people, who, who like who? We've done a lot of different projects for companies in the past. Uh, one of the most more recent ones we've we've worked with is Essie. Okay. Um, but that's about half of our business. So we have the White River brand. Uh, we've done projects with DPX gear for years. Sure. Um, done some work for Southern Grind and, and many other ones too. And some of them that we don't even have our name on or anything like okay. that that nobody even knows about. So. Yeah. But high yeah. quality stuff. Yeah. So exactly. if we were to handle it, we know where it came from. Right. Exactly. Yeah. That's the good. Yeah. Stuff. We like bringing that that work back to the United States. You that's know, that's awesome. kind of our goal. Yeah. No, it's fantastic. And I know I had the privilege of working with White River directly as a buyer for probably four or five years. Right. Yeah. Um, got to go to the shows and visit everybody and hang out with the family. So I'm somewhat familiar. But Matt was kind enough to send us the new lineup that we have here on the table today. Um, we're going to run through those at some point. Um, it looks like there's some exciting additions, some updates to some models, right? Yep. Um, where do you want to start? Well, I say we just kind of start in general with cool. a couple of our popular models, um, things that uh, we've had out for years, and then I'll lead into some of the, the, the uh, newer versions All right. and the reasons why we came out with those. Yeah. So our most popular model is our Model 1. It, this looks kind of familiar. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's, that's been, been out since the beginning of our company. That's why we call it the Model 1. It's our flagship model. It's a really good crossover design. I mean, it was originally designed for processing whitetail or, or processing game, but it really crosses over into the fixed blade EDC realm and uh, just a great all around knife that can be used for EDC, camp chores. Um, it's just really c compact, a nice deep finger choil on there sure. so you don't slip forward on it so it's safe to use. Um, Nice and slicey, but also robust for the size. So. And I, might, I may have missed this, but this is similar to like the Backpacker, right? Right. We used to, uh, we had three versions of this. So we had the M1 Backpacker, which had a paracord wrapped handle. Okay. Yeah. This one's the M1 Backpacker Pro, which has the texture G10 scales. Okay. And then we have the M1 Caper, which has uh, hollow pins, actually permanently affixed micarta scales on it. So those are the three versions. Uh, we, we're kind of phasing out the paracord okay. just because the value of this is so much higher. Uh, people tend to just lean towards the G10 handle version. That makes sense. So let me ask you a question. Underneath these scales, if they were to remove these, is this skeletonized still or is this just a full tank? Uh, it, it's full tang except for one slot that goes from one point to the other. So it's okay. just a full slot there. And that was originally designed so you could wrap the paracord through there. Okay. But it, it's still part of the design as well. And I know it helps with the balance as well. So That makes sense. I know we'll have some customers that are asking that and they'll probably 
rather than them destroy your knife, yeah. let's give them a chance to actually hear it before they try to take it apart, right? Yep. Before we run into those funny warranty issues. Yeah, right. Is this one of your favorites? Yeah, I mean, that's the one I probably use the most and okay. po you know, pocket carry the most. Sure. So, I mean, it's just a great size and a lot of times you don't need a knife bigger than that. A lot of people say, oh, look at this awesome knife I got, but really, this is all you really need, you know? Yeah, So usable, right? Usable, exactly. Then we're gonna move on. This is, oh, this is what I like. I love these ones that are stamp prototype. <laughs> these are the ones I always try and steal from the, from the vendors. So, yep. you know, we'll see where it ends up. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> yeah, so we took that same Model 1 handle design, which has been popular for years, and we've been asked for a skinning, a little bit more of a skinning knife, so we came out with the Model 1 Skinner. That's actually yet to be shipped to dealers, but it's, it's gonna be shipped within the next couple weeks here. So it's got a nice uh, fat belly skinning blade on there, some jimping near the tip if you wanna choke up on the front oh, for detailed work. A little work. bit of this? Yep. I don't know if you guys yeah, can see that. Exactly. All right. And it uses the same handle scales as our Model 1, so okay. you can order handle scale kits if you wanna change the colors out or things like that. So really quick here. So we've touched on these, they're similar in size, obviously, I think different uses. Um, right. You know, we talked about that a little bit about the jimping. Not a lot of people do the jimping up towards the tip. What's, you know, was there a lot of feedback that you got where people wanted to utilize that or wanted that implemented on the, on the platforms? Well, this knife specifically is made for skinning okay. as you're processing game. Sure. So a lot of times when you're doing that, and I can just kind of demonstrate. Trying to cut each other here. Obviously, using any knife, you can hold it with your thumb forward grip like that. But when you're skinning, a lot of times you're gonna have your finger up there and to know that you're not slipping forward over that tip okay. when your hand's all covered and sure. stuff, you know, it's just a nice feature. As you're sliding your finger forward, you know when to stop. That's yeah. kind of the idea, but it also gives you just extra control nice. out there at the point, so. All right. That was based on our own use when we're using knives, even okay. this one, you know, you tend to do that if you're skinning. Put your finger up there. Sure. You know, do that that type of stuff. Or if you're even field dressing or gutting, you can okay. do that. So that was the idea behind that. All right. So next on the list, we have the new model, right? The Ursus Cub. The Ursus Cub. Correct. That has been a very popular model since we came out with it. We uh, two variations introduced it at Shot Show. Yeah, we actually have three different handle options for that. Oh, all right. So we mention it. We had a very popular model that we've had for years. It's called the Ursus 45, and it's a four and a half inch blade. We took that exact design and scaled it down with a few adjustments. And this is kind of the, the fixed blade EDC bushcraft knife that we came out with this year. And it's just, it's just been really well received. It's a good usable knife, good size. It could be used for hunting, bushcraft chores, maybe not as much of a chopper like the Ursus 45 or some of the really okay. large bushcraft knives, sure. but it's still got that bushcraft design you know, the drop point with the center uh, center design tip, uh, high Scandi grind on it. It's very slicey, uh, but also very robust. So do you think that there's more of a demand for the bushcraft scene now? Do you feel like that's kind of made a resurgence? I, I feel like for us, it's never really gone away. Maybe a little bit of a dip for a while, but I mean, it's it's still strong from what we can tell. And, and people are super excited when we come out with the new models sure. in, that, in that realm, so. Um, we've got, as you know, the entire Firecraft series knives, yeah. which we'll talk about a little bit. Um, but the Ursus is really no frills, no extra features. If you just want a knife to use all day long, feel comfortable in your hand, this is the one to do it. Uh, this or its bigger brother, the Ursus 45. Sure. So Same question on this. If they were to pull the scales, what are they going to find underneath that? That one actually has the holes where the pins are, but then it's also got some lightning holes for balance as well. Okay. So it's not fully skeletonized, but it is partially. So when you're going, we talked about this a little bit earlier, but when we go through and we're starting to look at the line that you guys produce, say it's a new year, new line, mm -hmm. some of the de design inspiration that comes to the table for, you know, like the Ursus um, and the Cub and, and minimizing something like this or, or shrinking it down, is that because of the market demand or is that something where you guys see a hole in maybe your lineup or is it right. just something that maybe you guys are passionate about? Well, we're, it's, it's a portion of all of those okay. things. So um, if we see a hole in the lineup, something that we can add that fits a different use or a different category, then yeah, we'll start brainstorming on those ideas. Uh, this one has been in the back of our minds for years because the Ursus 45 is so usable and such a great knife when you get it out in the field. But it's a little bit large sometimes for, for actually okay. wielding it, especially if you're just wanting to casually carry a fixed blade. Sure. You know? I mean, a four and a half inch blade, it's, <laughs> you know, it's pretty large. So this one is actually one that you could, you know, do small of the back carry or multiple other options um, and it just gives you that, 
yeah, like I said, like you said, fill, fills a hole in our lineup sure. that, that we didn't really have a, a exact application for. So when we think of a new design or coming out, the first thing is, you know, is it something that people are going to want to use? Um, is it something that we would want to use? Yeah. And then what, what's the best version we can make of that? And then obviously we prototype, make multiple different versions. This one, we took the uh, Ursus 45 and scaled it down exactly proportionate, but then the handle was too small. Okay. So we had to actually elongate the handle out a little bit then. So it takes little adjustments. We even 3, print, 3D print some handles sometimes to get the feel of oh, it nice. before we actually produce it, so. That's gotta be nice having that available, right? Because yeah. back in the day, you were having to hand sculpt something. Oh yeah, yeah, That's, definitely. I'm sure there's a lot of handles laying around somewhere, right? Yeah. <laughs> there's, there's the whole, uh, the whole prototype office that's just Oh yeah, them, so. that's the office I need to come visit sometime. Yeah. yeah, we like that. One of the things that we haven't touched on with these knives, um, we were talking before we started filming and we talked a little bit about the sheaths, mm -hmm. right? Those are all made in-house. Right. So Kydex, you guys all do it yourself, molded, fitted. Yep. Um, we'll get into this here because this one's really satisfying when we do click it into the sheath. Mm -hmm. But I think that's always an important feature to mention. I know a lot of people like their Kydex, they like their leather as well. Um, yep. Different strokes for different folks, right? Right. Yeah, yeah, we like that. We do all the Kydex in-house, and we feel it's some of the best production Kydex sheaths on the market. That's how we feel, and that's how a lot of the feedback we get as well. Um, everybody's got their opinions and exactly what they want for Kydex, and I realize there's there's custom Kydex makers out there, and I, sure. I think there always should be, but we try to do the best we can to give somebody the best package right out of the box that they don't feel the need that they have to immediately go get something custom made for 80, 80 bucks or a hundred bucks. Sure. You know? So that's the idea. Well, I'm sure in the comments we'll have a nice range of why we should use leather instead of Kydex. Yeah. 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 That'll be in there. So yep. go ahead and leave those comments. We'll be sure to ignore them, but we appreciate it. <laughs> so moving on to the next guy, this, this is an interesting piece. Um, we were playing with them a little bit before I got on the set. I'm just gonna be honest. I called it my prison shank. Yeah. So I think it's, I think it's a shiv, but I do love it. I like the uniqueness. I like how slim it is. Mm -hmm. um, I like the the ability to carry this seems very high. Right. Right. I I've, I've went through this weird. I'm gonna pull this back. I went through this weird, I guess, transition since I've been at Blade HQ, where I used to carry like the largest knives possible. Mm -hmm. um, and then I was talking to my buyers, I think yesterday, and I was saying. Now I look for probably the smallest knife that I can pocket or put in like a yep. comfortable pair of shorts and just right. walk around in. And this is like speaking to me. So let's touch on this. Which yeah, model well is this? Let's talk about it. This is part of the Exodus series okay. knives that we make. So this kind of goes back to the OEM work that we, that we mentioned before. Um, this is designed by a guy named Jacob Peterson and he's a YouTube reviewer from Preppers Bunkers Outdoors. Okay. And he started Exodus Knife and Tool as kind of a, a project and uh, did some work with some other manufacturers and then he came to us with these designs said I really want to work with White River. He had reviewed some of our knives in the past and heard that we were a good source for this type of work. Um, so he sent us the designs, we started prototyping it and we actually started using them ourselves. Okay. And it, it does, the, the look of it is so interesting because it's something different, you know. It doesn't yeah. look exactly like something you would typically see, you know. Um, but when we started using them, we just fell in love with it. So we decided, we asked Jacob, hey, is, would you be open to us doing more of a collaboration and actually adding this to our line as well? All right. So we sell them, he sells them, his, his logo's on the opposite side of it. So that's an example of how one of our sure, OEM projects right have, has kind of become more of a collaboration under our brand. Um, and it's, just, it's a really fun project. Jacob, Jacob's a great, great guy to work with. Um, but the, the purpose behind these designs, and there's all kinds of videos about it too, if you want to look up Jacob. Um, but this is a, the whole idea is a minimalist survival knife or bushcraft okay. knife. So what do you need in a knife other than an edge, right? Sure. That's the whole idea. So how can you make a knife that's small enough to just have an edge? Okay. And then that's all you need to carry, right? Just like you were saying, you, yeah. you tend to lean more towards that because you can carry it easier. But it's also got a nice thick spine. So for a knife of this size, it's really usable out in the field. Yeah, no, that's very noticeable. I think that was one of the first things I noticed about it was yep. typically you get a knife of this size, it's pretty thin, the stock gets you know ground down pretty significantly. Right. But this, like you said, it's a, I mean, you have a lot of purchase there and a lot of stuff to work. Almost like the size of a bird and trout knife. Yeah. Something that you can actually use for other tasks like carving wood or sure. you know things along those lines. And the Exodus 4 is the same concept, just a little bit larger. So we have the Exodus 3 and the Exodus 4, correct? Yep. So this one's upsized. And we just, so essentially what we're saying is he sent both the designs over at the same time. Yep. 
Which one's your favorite? I prefer the Exodus 3. Yeah. I mean, that's the one I use the most. The Exodus 4 is great too if you wanted something a little bit larger that could do a little bit more. Um, but Exodus 3 for most of your chores and things that you need day to day, sure. it's going to be completely capable. All right, off topic, if you had to choose one of these knives in some kind of situation where you're out in the middle of the woods, would you choose the larger one or the smaller one? Out in the woods? Because hmm. they both have the same blade thickness. Right. So I think they're both pretty usable, but... Man, I, that's hard to choose. You I'm know? not very woody. <laughs> Look at me. I'd rather park my razor next to the trail and just walk in. I mean, a lot so. of times <laughs> I've I have chosen the Exodus three, so I got I guess I got to go with the three. All right, you know? all right. A man after my own heart. If I was gonna, if I knew I was gonna be in a survival situation for an extended period of time, but whoever knows that, like sure. a real one, I don't know. I'd probably go with the Exodus four just to have a little bit more blade there. All but right. That Exodus three is a great little knife. And then other thing I wanted to ask. I know I keep asking this and beating it, but. I know somebody's gonna mess up your scales by taking them off. So, skeletonized or are these just a full? These ones are full tang. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. So, don't take it off. Don't try and mess with it. You're just gonna screw it up. Then Matt's gonna be pissed that he's warranting for something <laughs> stupid. So, well, cool. we do have the no questions asked warranty. So. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. <laughs> what, okay, so let's, let's beat down that horse for a second. Mm -hmm. What's the most interesting warranty you've seen come back? Uh, we've had a lot of interesting stuff. Uh, I was doing light batoning through a, a stick that was a half inch in diameter and it, my blade got chipped up <laughs> and they clearly were trying to break through a nail with it all the way up the edge, you know, things along those lines. So I mean, you know, there are people that probably take advantage of it, but we've got the no questions asked warranty for, for a reason. You know, right. we want people to know that when they buy this knife, they're going to have it for the rest of their life no matter what. And most people are honest people. so. Oh, that's good. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, if you see, if you get any good ones, let us know. We'd, yeah. we'd love to share that and make fun of who that person is. Yeah, we've got a whole so. bit of them, so. <laughs> <laughs> we like that. Yeah. All right, we're going to move on to what I think is one of my favorite series. This has been around for a while, mm -hmm. right? These have some upgrades. Yep. This, my friends, is the Firecraft. Tell us about this guy. Yeah, so this is a, a, an entire series of knives. This is designed by Jason Teets. Uh, he's a, another Michigander, um, and he came to us with these designs. He's He's an interesting background, obviously very outdoorsman-ish, and uh, he also has experience in the design uh, industry. That's what he does for a living. Um, so he, he designed these basically to make fire in the wild. They're purpose-built for that reason. So they are survival knives. Um, this is the smallest of the series, the FC 3.5. It's a really good EDC fixed blade. Top spine is sharpened, so it can be used with a ferrocetium rod. Okay. Yeah. Um, that's an FC4, so this is kind of the original design that we came out with. Um, and it comes in a 4 inch, a 5 inch, and a 7, seven inch blade. The FC4, the FC5, okay. and the FC7. They all have the same handle with a stainless steel bow drill divot insert for, for making bow drill fires. They've got the sharpened notch and then the also sharpened spine for using with ferrule rods. Okay. Um, and These ones also have liners, correct? Correct, yeah, orange G10 liners. That's the standard handle option is gonna be olive drab canvas micarta with orange G10 liners. So can I ask a question about the liners real quick? Mm -hmm. What's the reason for having a liner on this in comparison to some of the other models that don't? Well, the main reason for that was just the visibility. Okay. So if you drop it, it's something bright that you can see. Nice. Uh, but it's also not overly bright, something if you just wanna have a little bit of concealability too. Sure. So it's, if you're looking for it, the hope is that you can see it on the ground. Um, but it's not going to be flashing all over the place when you're walking through the woods, you that know. So that's the idea behind that. And it just looks cool, I, you know. I like the two-tone color. <laughs> and back to the Kydex sheaths. They all come with a Kydex sheath package. Um, depending on the model, it's going to come with this dangler. Let's move these out of your way. So yeah. the FC 3.5 does not come with a dangler. It comes with a multi-position Kydex belt Whoa. loop. Messing up. Um, but the FC 4, 5, and 7 all come with a dangler attachment. And like I was talking about before, they click in real nice. Really good retention. That's they, satisfying. They don't rattle. Um, and then the dangler loops on these actually have a pull the dot snap. Oh. So you don't have to take your belt off to put the sheath on. All right. So you can slip that through your belt, click it on. And part of the reason that we did that was if you want to use the bow drill divot with the sheath on, oh, you, can still use it. you can still use it and you don't have to take your belt off in order to do that. You can just release it and then hold it this way. Because Lord knows you need a cut in your hand while you're trying to operate a bow drill, right? Exactly, right? <laughs> <laughs> and so I have a question, because this is something that stood out to me. 
So your ferro rod that you have on here has a micarta handle on it, yep. or a micarta, I don't know what you call it, grip? I don't right. know. Yep. Is there a specific reason for that? Um, we make them to match the handles for okay. one thing, but it gives it a little bit of grippiness. It just has grippiness yeah. like a micarta handle on a knife, sure. obviously. Um, it just gives you a little bit more to hold on to compared okay. to some of the other, other ones that we do offer for some of the more compact models, which this one just has a little nylon cap grip on there. It serves the same purpose. If you didn't have a grip at all, you know, it'd be yeah. kind of hard to hold on to that. So the idea is just to give something to hold on to like while that. you're actually using it. No, it's, I mean, it yeah. just proves that everything's well thought out. Mm -hmm. I think it's appreciated by everyone. Um, so tell me, uh, you know, I, I think a lot of our customers always hear about, I'm just gonna leave that there because I'm not athletic enough to put that back in. Mm -hmm. So I think a lot of our customers always, you know, they, they appreciate the sentiments as far as like what the knives are, the steel that's used, the materials that are used. But I know some other things that they like to hear is, you know, typically about the production process, how designs come to be. Mm -hmm. um, tell us a little bit about your production process and what makes White River so special in comparison to other people. Yeah, well, like I said before, we're a really small company. Um, my brother does all the design work. I usually try to take those designs, make them a reality, obviously a co collaboration effort between the two of us. Sure. Um, but that's kind of how it, it starts out. Um, or there's the other, the other things where it's a collaboration with other designers, which I mentioned a couple other ones here. Sure. We've also worked with Jerry Fisk. Oh yeah, We have lines with like him. Jerry. Um, and, and multiple other ones in the past. So that's, that's kind of where it starts. Um, then we try to make it a reality in the shop and, and make it be producible. Okay. But our, our kind of our idea is to try to make custom quality knives on a production level. Sure. So that's our goal is to have the fit and finish that's nearing a custom made knife, handmade knife. Yeah. Um, but, but it's a little bit more affordable because it is made at a little bit more of a production level. That makes sense. But with that in consideration, every knife is touched by hands, you know. Which every is knife awesome. is sharpened by hand right now and all that. So we've, we've always done that from the beginning. They all come wicked sharp out of the box. Oh, definitely. So, And they come with a great box. Yeah, right? yeah they the all come thing. with a wooden box as well. So. Yeah, I think, that's, I think that's very overlooked. I know uh, the next knife we're gonna talk about in the series, I, uh, my sister has a boyfriend who he fishes for a living and he does, um, he fishes for like salmon and steelhead up in Washington. Okay. But he wanted a good fillet knife. Mm -hmm. And so my mom was like, hey, send me a good one, whatever else. So I sent her the, a fillet knife of yours and she gets the box and she's like, you weren't supposed to spend this much. You know, and I was like, <laughs> it's, I was like it's a pretty reasonably priced knife, but it comes in a very nice package and gives everyone, yeah. I think, a great experience when they get the knife. Mm -hmm. um, and that's something I think is very often overlooked. Yeah. So you guys do a great job of capitalizing. Yeah, well, but, thank you. We like to call it value added packaging. It's something that you can just use as a gift box right off the bat if you wanted to. It's something you can store the knife in if you want to. Sure. So that's the idea behind it. And, and honestly, compared to some of the cardboard packaging that you buy out there and or that you have to source out there, yeah. we actually were able to produce it for a pretty reasonable price where it didn't really increase our retail price oh, when great. we made that switch in 2012. So. Okay, so it's been a while. Yeah, basically since the beginning, except for the first year, maybe year and a half, we've, we've been doing uh, wooden boxes. Okay, yeah, and they all come sealed, which is nice. Yep. In, until I get a hold of them and I break them open in the warehouse, so. Right. <laughs> Too bad, you should have worked at Blade HQ and got there first. So this boy, I actually really like this. This is something that's a little bit more slim, a little bit more unique, I like the handle. Tell us a little bit about this. Yeah, so our original fillet knife designs were a little bit different than this. They had a full hidden tang, um, and we originally came out with a micarta version, but the more popular one was our cork handle fillet knife. Oh, that's right. So that's been popular for years. Um, but what we wanted to do, we're still producing the cork version, but what we wanted to do was produce a line of full tang fillet knives, a little bit more heavy duty, um, and a little bit more of the professional grade that you would, you would use you know, in an actual uh, professional setting. So one of the things you were pointing out is that this is contoured, right? Right, yeah, we try to do the best fin fit and finish so you don't have any hot spots there. And then we have a, a textured pattern on there as well, so you have a nice, nice grippy feel on the sides. Is there a name for the pattern? Um, no. Okay. Well, <laughs> there it is, fan submissions, let's go. Yeah, let's hear them. Not gonna work, but we're gonna claim that it will. Um, and then, I was saying, so you're up in Michigan, mm -hmm. there's a lot of water up there. There is. How often do you get to test these? Uh, every year, yeah, we, we try to go out all the time. All right. Um, so obviously there's uh, the big lake, Lake Michigan, that yeah. we're right by, I mean, we're 10, 15 minute drive from there. Oh. And then the White River runs through some of our property up there, um, which is you know good trout fishing, and there's just endless fishing in, in Michigan. So, sounds like we need to come do a shop tour. 
Yeah, I think you should. I think we should too. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> <laughs> no, these are great. And you said one more time, they come in how big? Six, eight, and 10 inch blade Six, options. Six, eight, and 10. So you have your crappie, your trout, and then like your salmon steelhead. Yeah, exactly. Awesome. Yeah, pan okay. fish, medium size, large. Yep. Beautiful. All right, so I heard you brought something that nobody else has seen yet, right? Right. Um, let's talk about them because I'm excited about yeah. this. Yeah, so we are going to come out with our first ever White River folding knife. It's going to be a slip joint folder. This one has a trapper blade, but our nice US made if you guys can see that, folding knife. It's a burlap my carter, right? That's right. Walk, on talk, walk and talk on this is phenomenal. I know some of you slip joint guys will be all over that, but so this is a slip joint trapper blade, full flat grind, right? Right. And then this has a burlap handle, and that one has a. These ones are prototypes, so we're not exactly sure what our handle options are going to be yet. But this one's got a burl carbon fiber, yeah, just for one of the prototypes on there. That I like the blade stock on these too. What's the thickness on this blade? Do you know? Uh, 0.100. 0.100. And that nail nick is definitely unique, right? Yeah. That's something that's a little bit different than what everybody else offers? Right. It's just a little bit of a different design, but we went with the traditional one-sided nail nick on it. Um, but we paid a, lot of, played, uh, paid a lot of attention to detail, just like you were talking about with the half stop. Everything is perfectly flush at all positions. So as you can see, it's oh, nice yeah. and flush there. The half stop, still perfectly flush. And then the closed position, still perfectly flush as well. That's gorgeous. So we put a lot of thought and a lot of work into just the design and making these Extremely nice fit and finish. And you said these the first run will be available? We're hoping to have a handful of them at Blade Show. Okay. And then they'll be coming uh, you know, to dealers shortly thereafter. So sure. Blade HQ will definitely be getting them soon. Oh, we appreciate that. Yep. What's the blade steel on this? S35VN. Okay. Uh, we hope to do some Magna Cut versions in the future, but that's not guaranteed, so. That'll just be a Blade HQ exclusive. Don't worry about <laughs> it. Um, no, these are beautiful. Do we have a retail price tag attached to these? Yeah, they're gonna be 250. 250, so reasonable, all USA made. Right. Right, all the way down to it. Does, and I can't remember if I heard you say it. Does it come with a sheath? Uh, no plans at this point. Okay. Yeah. No, that's all right. These are great. I think it's a great value. I think, you know, there's a lot of slip joint companies out there doing a lot of things right now. Um, a lot of them are overseas. A lot of them are domestic. Just depends. I think everybody's going to be grateful there's another USA produced slip joint in the mix. Obviously, first folding knife for White River. Yep. So tell me kind of what the discussion went on this, because I feel like this is kind of a sensitive subject with a lot of companies. Well, we've been talking about folding knives for years, and obviously it's a whole different market, um, but everybody carries folding, knife, folding knives, and this was inevitable for our company to get into it. And like I said before, with the OEM work that we've done, sure. we've done a lot of folding knives that our, our name is not on. Okay. So we do have experience with making folders or components for folders. Um, but we wanted to come out with something that was very traditional and classic that goes along with the rest of our line. A lot of our knives are just very traditional. And that's why we wanted to start out with a slip, slip joint design before we get into some of the other locking designs that we, we plan to do in the future too. Okay. So this is just made sense for the White River brand. Just an awesome usable slip sure. joint folder. With so a little modern upgrade, right? Yeah, exactly. We, we feel it's modernized, but it's also classic and true to the, the idea of a good classic slip joint. And the other nice part that I like that you know, like a traditional traditional slip joint is pinned, correct? Right. So these actually have some hardware to them that's removable. Yeah, right? it is. Uh, they are all flush finished, so I'm not sure if we'll have replaceable scales or anything like that in the future. In the future, but somebody will it's mess a possibility. Up. Yeah. Somebody will mess it up. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> uh, no, so I, I was really glad that I was able to fill in today because I had the privilege of being able to see these. I had I had no idea that these were being released or what was coming down the pipeline. Um, definitely unique to White River. I've always seen your fixed plays. Always appreciated. Um, we've had the privilege of actually giving a couple away to some of the local guys like Fieldcraft Survival mm -hmm. um, for, some, for some gifts and I know everyone really likes the line so like this is just a strong contender for you know upgrading the line obviously some additional offerings I know the customers will be stoked about this um, I don't know what else to say besides these are beautiful we were just joking about the hand set and finish and how getting the fingerprints off were, were, were so hard to get off but they're also beautiful, and I think it's just something that'll be a great addition to everybody's White River collection. So yeah. we appreciate it, Matt. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, man. Thanks for coming in. Appreciate it. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Go ahead and like, subscribe, and comment below.